we have a cannon. I'm going to stand right in front of the cannon and shoot it. What happens when you do that? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to do some first person crash tests. So that means I'm going to be running around on foot and seeing what happens in various situations. We're going to start with something nice and simple. We're going to get a real fast car. So how about we go with the drag version of the Burnside Special. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run really, really far away from the Burnside Special. Here's my little secret to run faster. Zoom! And then, boom, this is where we are. Now, we're going to tell the AI to go ahead and try to get me. And eventually, there should be an AI barreling down this road at well over 100 miles per hour. Unless, of course, they get lost or confused or something, which they sometimes do. And that is quite possibly what's happening, AI. What? It sounds like they're coming from the wrong direction. They are, those idiots. Ah! <laughs> oh, you really screwed that up, AI. Okay, come on. Try this again. I'm going to give you some help this time, okay? I'm going to line you up. So all you need to do is literally drive in a straight line. You can't mess that up, right? Please? And then I got to get myself back into position right in the middle of the road. And they should be coming at me perfectly. And here we go. Take the hit. Oh, fighting back. Who wins in a fight between a person and a car? The person. That actually worked pretty well. Let's try a couple of more dumb things. This time, I want to try jumping over the car right as it gets here. So I just got to time this jump just perfectly. And there's a bit of a delay. So now, oh, no, I couldn't quite jump over them. It was close, but again, a glancing blow to me and the car. Yeah, he got much more than a glancing blow. One more of these. One more. One more. This time, the car is barely going to move me. How is that going to happen? Well, watch this. I cower in fear. Bye, idiot. <laughs> they got completely destroyed. They just flew off the road. I don't even know if they can drive anymore. I got to run to them and see what happened. I hear him revving the engine, but it don't sound good. All right, AI. What you doing? Ah, I see. You've completely ruined your car. Let me laugh at you as I stomp on your car. Ha ha ha. You're a big, fat idiot. Okay, I lied. We're going to do one more car-based crash test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out this car for a lower to the ground car. So how about we just go as low as it can go with the bolide. And then I got to get back into position because I was over in the dirt looking at the car that crashed. Not that long of a walk. Or we could just be lazy and zoom fly. And then we're in position. And then we need to once again tell the AI to go ahead and chase me. And then, what, what are you doing? I see you going the wrong way. Come here. Come here, baby. It's okay. Come on. Okay, can we jump over a bolide? Let's find out. Oh, yes, we can. I even toe-tapped the roof and completely avoided them. That was beautiful. All right, what are you doing now? Oh, no, you're stuck? You poor innocent bolide. Let me help by trying to push the vehicle with my body to make it move out of the dirt that it's stuck in. This has to work eventually. Come on, keep pushing. One more time. Okay, maybe... Oh, there it goes. You're welcome. Oh, don't you... Oh, my goodness. Did you really get stuck again? You are the dumbest AI I've seen yet. Unbelievable. And that's going to do it for messing around with the AI in cars. Now we're going to mess around with the props because we can do some fun things with those. Like, for example, the soccer ball. We can kick it, I'm sure, right? Yeah, we can kick it just great. But here's a different question. Can we jump on top of it and then stand on top of it as it rolls around a little bit? Yeah, we can. Can we actually control which direction it goes? Maybe? Like, I'm trying to go forward a little bit and it kind of works, but it's very easy to fall off. We can continue kicking it around, just having fun with soccer. Heck, you could have an actual soccer match like this, and it'd probably work okay-ish, actually. It'd work better than trying to use the cars, because look at this maneuverability. Turn it on a dime. Super easy to get in the right position, and then boom, hit that soccer ball. Although, it goes so slowly, I feel like being a goalie would just be super easy unless the goals are massive. Anyways, that's all we're going to do with the soccer ball, because we have lots of props to take a look at. Next up, let's try out this cinder block wall. This should be good. So here's a simple question. If we run straight at it at full speed, will it break? So let's see. It broke a couple off the top, but it's still standing. Although every hit will make it less sturdy until eventually it will completely crumble. Nice. All right, one more idea. If we jump into it as we're running, 
Will that take it down in just one hit? And jump! Oh yes, there's some damage to it. The bottom is still together, but not for long. Ha ha! First person mode wins again. Uh, what do we have next? How about the concrete retaining wall? This one I don't think it's going to go so well. Because these blocks are huge and they are heavy. So just trying to jump at it like, uh, Yeah, it didn't, even, it didn't even budge. Look at this. Doesn't even know I'm pushing into it. So if you want to get rid of these, we got to use node grabber at like full strength and then really just yank on it. That's full strength node grabber. Those things are way too heavy. They're the world's heaviest Legos. All right, next up, how about we try the gate? Because on the gate, you can drive through it with a car. Can you run through it with a person? So we're going to hit it right in the middle because that's probably where you get the best leverage. And, uh, ooh, it stretched. It really stretched. Next one might get it. Here we go. Oh, it stretched even more, it looked like, and it's still not breaking. Come on. Break. Okay, apparently the chain is strong. Well, if we jump at it like that, come on. Come on. No, okay. Secret maneuver. Jump at it and keep jumping, and that'll put extra pressure on it, and that might eventually break it or not. Wow. The chain is holding up surprisingly strong. Like, there are dents all in that thing, and it's still holding up. All right, what if it's just the single gate? Because I think the single gate is a little bit weaker than the double. So we'll try this once more. Again, try hitting it in the middle, and then we'll also hit it on the side where it's probably max leverage. And oh, yeah, look at that. I am stronger than a gate. Why do you even play with these gates? Do you see how easily I destroyed that? Here, let's do that again. That was too easy. That didn't feel right. So here we go again. Just running at it and jump. Oh, it's a little stronger this time. Jump. Oh, no. I can't break it. Uh. Well, I broke it once, and it was spectacular. There we go. Get out of here. All right, that's good for that one. Next up, let's go with the inflated mat, which is massive. And the real question is, how would you even get on the inflated mat legitimately? Well, here's actually a way you could probably do it. First, you move the inflated mat way over here, as weirdly as it moves. And we'll place it, like, right up on everything. It's, like, real close. Actually, a little bit inside of it. That's probably okay. And then what we would do is we would walk all the way over to here. So let's just, you know, pretend that that's what I did. And then we go up the ramp and we could walk over maybe on top of it. My goodness. The inflatable mat is much bigger than I remember. I don't know if we'll actually be able to go up on it. Oh, look, there's actual stairs. And yes, first person mode does mostly work with stairs. Like they go up the stairs very slowly. I should just stay to the ramp. But we are up. And the mat is actually partially in the ground next to where I'm going. So that's probably the only reason it's low enough for me to jump onto it. And even then, it's not going to be the easiest of jumps, is it? Here we go. Big hop. Come on. Go. Go. Keep climbing. Get to the top. Get to the top. Yes, I have conquered the inflatable mat. And you can see it rippling as we jump on it. It's like a waterbed. You see the ripples. Here we go. Rippling. All right. What do we got after that? Next up, we have the large bridge. And we should be able to walk across this. No problem. Right? I see no reason why not. Well, okay. The fact that it's glitched inside of things is maybe a reason. So, hey, now we're over here. That looks fine. Can we jump onto this part? Oh, that's not that tall at all. And then, just keep running. We should have no problem whatsoever walking across this unless there's something weird with my character's weight. They don't seem to weigh too much. So, maybe it's supposed to be pretty accurate of a real person's weight? You know, actually, we could test that. If we go and grab the weight pad, we can just stand on it and it'll tell us how fat or how thin we are. So we got to wait for it to zero out. Not zeroed out yet. Come on. All right. Then we hop on to it. And we weigh... Wow, we're fat. We weigh about 8H2 pounds. Or, if you want to convert that to actual numbers, 248 pounds. And then in metric... We weigh about 110 kilograms, which is 1,782 liters of milk. Thank you, metric system. That's probably correct. All right. Next up, we're going to try messing around with the large cannon. This is where things might get a little bit wacky because in order to use the cannon, it's a little bit weird. So first off, we go to first person mode. And if we walk into it right now, we have no way to actually activate the cannon. And then if we go back to be the cannon to shoot it, we go back to first person mode, it puts you in the wrong spot. So here's what you got to do. 
First, you line up the cannon however you want it. So I want it to shoot me actually up into the air because that seems more fun. Then we go to first person mode and we want to teleport ourselves into the cannon right about at the base. So that looks pretty good. And then we go back to being the cannon. And then we need to freeze physics, fire the cannon, go to first person mode, teleport ourselves inside of the cannon. And we're inside it right now. So I'm going to unfreeze physics. And the second that happens, it'll shoot us off, I think. So go. Woo! It worked! Whoa! <laughs> it really shot me up into the air. I can see the whole map from here. Oh no, oh no, oh no, where's my inflatable mat? Oh, it's okay, there's no fall damage. <laughs> it's actually bouncing. You bounce off of the ground and you're perfectly fine. So yes, you can shoot yourself out of the cannon. It's just a little bit of an awkward setup to make it work correctly. And I thought it was pretty fun to do it. So let's do it one more time. Three, two, one, fire! Oh, there we go. That's much more like what I expected to see. I don't know why the last one shot me so high up. All right, one more with the cannon. This time we're going to line it up as high as it can go so we can fly, hopefully, as high as possible. And the cannon, it goes pretty high. It almost shoots you straight vertical once you get it up there. Okay. Then we need to realign the camera so it's in position. We'll put it, like, right here and make sure that looks okay. All right, that angle looks good. So back to the cannon. Freeze physics. Fire. First person mode. F7 to teleport. Three, two, one, go! Woo! Although still not as high as the first time. Somehow that first one really just launched me. All right, well, we have successfully proven you can shoot a man out of a cannon and he will be perfectly fine. That's also been proven for hundreds of years thanks to circuses. So next up, we're going to go even more strange. We're going to crush with the large crusher. And sometimes you just have no idea what's going to happen. So we have to start closing the crusher and then immediately go to first person mode and run inside of it before it's too late. Actually, I had a bit more time than I expected. And now we cannot escape and we are being crushed. Whoa, I'm getting shorter. <laughs> Whoop. Well, I've been crushed. The bad news is there's no way out of the crusher. We are just permanently stuck inside of it. This is how you die. What a depressing thing to think about. Okay. Enough of the crusher. Let's go ahead and go to the next one, which is going to be the large hamster wheel. And this one is pretty obvious. What happens if you run inside of it? Can you actually get it rolling? Let's see if we can get through the bushes and find out. And by the way, game, why did you think over there by the bushes was the best place to put me? That uh, is a mystery. All right, so come on. Get the wheel moving. Either direction. I don't care. Go this way. All right, so just a person is not really enough to move the wheel. But if we wanted to, we could go ahead and go back to being the wheel and just get it spinning a little bit and seeing if that little bit of momentum is enough for us to get it moving with a person. All right, so that should be good. Back to first person mode, just teleport myself in and then run, run, run. It kind of works. We can kind of run on it like a hamster. I don't think I'm actually making it spin any faster. We're just maintaining location. Neat. And if I stop running, there we go. We get pushed along and pushed out of the edge. Whoa! <laughs> we get shot up. Ooh, ooh. Can we land on top? Oh, we couldn't quite make it. We got to try that, though. Can we stand on top of it and then run in the opposite direction? So here we go. Yep. Actually, you don't have to run very fast at all. You can pretty easily stay on top of it. You just got to get lined up once and then a little maneuver side to side and you're good. Wow, that works surprisingly well. All right, now... Let's make it where the wheel keeps accelerating and accelerating and accelerating. So it should be in acceleration mode. It looks like it's going pretty fast. And then what I would want to do is I want to teleport myself inside of the wheel and then detach it. So we put the camera right in the middle, back to the wheel, freeze physics, detach, first person mode, teleport. And then go. The wheel should be detached. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? I have no idea what just happened. Oh, that was great. We got to do that again and figure out what the heck was going on. Or even if, can it be done twice or not? So once again, first you got to get it going. And it does take a second. So just bear with me here. I want to make sure it's going nice and fast, just like before. And then first we're going to test it without detaching the wheel. So that should be going good enough. We'll go ahead and freeze physics, get myself inside of the wheel, unfreeze physics, and then let's see. With it just spinning attached, it works perfectly fine. I see absolutely no problems occurring here. So now we just got to go ahead and detach the wheel just as before. 
And then we're gonna do the exact same test and see is there chaos or not. And yo, if you just detach the wheel, it freaks out. You just kinda get stuck inside of the wheel. Nothing crazy is actually happening. It just looks like it until the wheel eventually just disconnects itself like that and then the pieces explode everywhere. How weird and interesting. All right, so let's just go ahead and be inside of it one more time because that was just so wacky, I gotta do it again. Up to speed with you. Faster, faster, faster. I thought the hamster wheel used to have a speedometer. Eh, maybe not. All right, so that looks like it's going pretty good. So we're doing this one more time where we stay inside of the wheel just to cause some serious chaos. And apparently I'm not actually in the wheel for some reason. That's okay. There's a ramp. We can walk right in. And then what's going to happen? Oh, yep. <laughs> I don't understand. Why does it do that? I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch it. Nope. Couldn't catch it. It's too heavy. I did the best I could. Oh, no. You can kind of just trap yourself like this, can't you? There's <laughs> no way out. I'm trapped and it's too heavy to move. Thankfully, we're done with the hamster wheel. So it's time to go on to the next prop, which is going to be the large roller. And just like the hamster wheel, we got to get this thing going up to speed. It's at 100% already. And all we got to do now is just walk in and see what happens. Whoa! Hey, that's just as high as the can of shot us earlier. We got a view of everything. And then we're falling back to the ground. Boom. All right, let's spin it in the opposite direction then. So this time it should be pushing us away. I just got a toggle direction. I gotta remember how to use this. And there we go, perfect. So back to first person mode. Wait for it to make sure it's up to speed. Looks pretty good to me. And then run at it. Ah, nothing really happens. You just kind of bounce off. How boring is that? Well, you don't just bounce off of it. Every now and then it'll pop you up into the air. I wonder if we can get even higher though, going the other way, going forward. So. Go back to sucking me in. I think it's sucking it in, isn't it? Yeah, okay. And then it's up to 100% speed, actually, much faster than I remember. So here we go. You gotta, like, jump as you go into it. I bet it'll make us go extra high. So, jump! That didn't... <laughs> okay, jumping does not help, so we'll just walk into it. Walk! Yeah! Yeah! That is higher. That is way higher. Ooh, I'm gonna land on the roof. Here we go. This is how you get onto the roof of a building in the easiest way possible. Uh oh, I'm gonna fall in the hole, ain't I? Come on, land it. Oh, yes. Can you fall through these holes? Yes, you can. I actually nailed that landing. Seriously, it could not have been better. I landed on the tiniest strip. So next up, we're gonna be taking a look at the large spinner. And I'm pretty sure the large spinner needs a bit more time to get up to speed, and it does have a speedometer. I believe it tops out at somewhere around 150-ish miles per hour. So we'll wait until it looks like it's topped out then we'll go and jump in. Yeah, it's right at red line, basically. It's 146. About what I was expecting. So we're in first person mode, and then we just charge right at it. Oh, it shoots us into the air again. Although now, it's not quite as amusing because I've already seen everything from way up in the air a couple of times, and now I just expect everything to launch me into the air for no real reason. Back onto the ground, though, and we could go for round two. Is it going to be any different? Maybe it'll like shoot me to the side. Because that's what I was thinking would happen. Here we go. There we go. Whoa. Well, it shot me to the side. And then I just decided to raise into the air. Very, very odd. But okay then. Uh, here we go. Crashing down to earth. It's too bad you really can't move around when you're flying in the air. Whoa. Okay. I said there'd be no more surprises like that. And then here we are bouncing back into the air viciously. Okay, now everything's back to normal, I think. That was strange. All right, that should be enough of the large spinner. Now, we're gonna do something dumb. Let's get the old cannon. And now would be a good time to mention. If I did that dumb thing where I put a random clip at the start of the video, I would be like, we have a cannon. I'm gonna stand right in front of the cannon and shoot it. What happens when you do that? Find out in this video. And once again, we gotta use that wacky procedure where we Freeze physics, become the cannon, shoot the cannon, become first person, teleport myself, and three, two, one, get shot by a cannonball, and yeah, that was actually surprisingly okay, except yeah, there's a hole in my stomach probably, but aside from that, that went pretty well. I really half expected it to somehow shoot me up into the air after the last few. Thankfully, it didn't do that. Let's go ahead and do one more. We'll change the position a little bit though. We'll stand like right in front of it this time, as close as we can possibly be. So freeze physics, B cannon, shoot, first person, stand in front of it, go! 
Not bad. All right, now for the exact opposite. We're just going to stand a little bit farther away from it. How far away? Let's go all the way to about there. That looks like a reasonable distance. I should just make a macro for this. But anyways, set up complete and fire. Ooh, that time I kind of saw the cannon actually shoot. Unfortunately, when you freeze physics in first person mode, you can't rotate the camera. So you're just at whatever angle you end up being at. Well, I think that'll do it for the cannon. And then who do we have next? How about the rollover sled? And it's pretty much the same thing here. Line up the camera, camera is lined up, be the sled, freeze physics, activate sled, and then become the person, teleport the person, and then go. Sled is going up, and here we go. That was underwhelming. <laughs> that was very underwhelming, but that's exactly what it should have been, actually. I have no complaints about the way it actually worked. So how about now we try the suspension bridge? This is a really, really long bridge. It's so long, in fact, the game decided to just spawn it up over here for some reason. Okay. So anyways, we become the person. We're underwater. Yes, you can swim, but that's not what we're doing. And then can we walk on this bridge? Yeah, even if it's really long, we're not heavy enough to really cause any sort of issues. I can even jump on it. You can see there's a little bit of a reverberation going through the bridge, but it's not really causing any serious issues of sorts. And then over here, there's... What? Why am I over here? Is this weird? I don't know what's going on, but hey, I will take it because the bridge is so far away anyways. So now we can go on to the tilt board. And then with the tilt board, can we jump onto it? Tilting a little bit here. And big hop this time. That was pathetic. Come on, you call that a hop. Oh, he's just pushing it. Come on, hop. Hop. Yeah. Can we tilt it? Come on, can we tilt it? Oh, we can. Okay, you know what this means. We must launch ourselves into the air using the tilt board. Get out of here. I don't need you anymore. So we get a fresh tilt board. And we need the biggest, heaviest thing that I can easily place, which would be the concrete retaining wall. And I'm going to just put it way in the air, like right there. Okay. Now, all I need to do is stand on the other end of the board and fly into the air, hopefully. <laughs> that is a legit way to launch yourself in the air. Uh-oh. Large tilt got d simulation paused. I don't know why it did that, but that was beautiful. One more time. Slow motion this time. All right. Setup is good. Set myself where I need to go. Get that slow motion. Where are the bricks? There they are. All right, let's see what the tilt board does here. Really seeing it. Oh, it's so strong. It's metal reinforced. So it should be pretty strong. And then boom, we are flying into the air. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And boop, back down to the ground. All right, there's only one more thing we have to do with the person. And this is where things are getting more stupid than before. We're going to push myself off a leap of death? If you ask me why I'm doing this, I would tell you I actually don't know. It just seems like it'd be something dumb to do, and we gotta try it. And we're going at blazing speeds. We're going at, like, very slow, it feels like. You know what we should actually do? We can measure how fast the character walks if we wanted to. We just gotta add the menu elements. So we hit the plus, and I'll just go ahead and type speed and get the digital air speedometer. Place it right in the middle of the bottom of the screen. All right, so we're going a blazing speed of, when we're walking, 4 miles per hour. When we're running, 11 miles per hour. That's actually pretty fast. It doesn't feel like you're going that fast, but apparently we are. Now, here's where the airspeed really gets to kick it up. How fast can we fall? We are falling at about 75 miles per hour, and it seems like we're almost hit terminal velocity because we were really slowing down there. And <laughs> that's... That's how it's going to work. You just kind of walk down leap of death the whole way. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how far I fly into the air doing random nonsense. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.